With the NBA playoffs coming to a close and the Denver Nuggets coming out on top of the Western Conference, we are now entering a new era of sorts and sort of a changing of the guards in the West. Teams that have long been Western Conference powerhouses are now seeing their teams reach the twilight years as the time limit of their stars are starting to wane. Teams like the Lakers, the Suns, the Clippers, and the dynastic Golden State Warriors have all looked very mortal and like time could be ticking on their contending status. This can open up some serious opportunities to teams that are on the rise and teams that we think are next up have sort of been doing everything in their power not to be next up. Whether we're talking about the Timberwolves trading their competitive team to pair Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert in the front court. Whether we're talking about Zion Williamson not being able to be on the court for the Pelicans. Whether we're talking about the Mavericks front office not being able to successfully build around Luka Doncic. And then you have the misery that is the Memphis Grizzlies. This dynamic could potentially clear the way for some young, hungry team that is lurking in the background. With the Spurs getting the number one pick in the NBA draft lottery, it is pretty much accepted that they will be getting Victor Wembanyama, who is a franchise archer in talent, and we will see if he's ready to lead a bottom-dwelling Spurs team to the playoffs, which would kick off his legendary career beautifully, by the way. The team we have all been excited about in the Oklahoma City Thunder has really been exciting the NBA world, and I think it is also commonly expected for people saying they will be taking a big jump next season with the competitive and deep batch of talent they have paired with their prized draft pick Chet Holmgren coming back to play his rookie season after sitting out a full year on what would have been his rookie year with an injury. The young Houston Rockets, on the other hand, had another tough rebuilding year of mistakes and missteps, and they were very much in the running for the Wimby sweepstakes, but unfortunately they fell short of that goal, but somehow the buzz around this team is still there. There have been countless headlines surrounding the team, and it's interesting because it seems right now all eyes are on them. Going back to the expectations of the Oklahoma City Thunder, being a playoff caliber team and ready to take the next step and leap, are the Rockets attempting to challenge the Thunder as the next team in the West? Now obviously the answer is yes, every team is, but really I want to focus on how close are they to challenging the Thunder and could the Rockets potentially eclipse this Thunder team in the Western Conference pecking order. Now before we get into whether the Rockets are ready to eclipse OKC, I'm going to need you all to hit that thumbs up button so we can rank in the YouTube algorithm and continue to grow the channel. We are growing fast over this past month and I recently hit 545 subs on the channel and we're that close on the quest to 1000 subs. So likes and subs really help out the channel, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. After the cheating scandal saga that happened with Ime Yudoka and the Boston Celtics, Yudoka was finally able to go and explore his options, this time with other head coaching jobs. <laughs> Despite the controversy, Yudoka was and is still a heavily coveted basketball mind, especially after what he was able to do last season with getting the Celtics to the finals after a masterclass of a defensive strategy guided the Celtics the full way. Unfortunately, they were eliminated by the dynastic Golden State Warriors, but after that and the scandal with Yudoka, he was able to land with the Houston Rockets. Now this signing definitely sets the tone for the entire offseason for the Rockets and the entire next season because this was a statement signing. Yudoka alluded to the fact that he wasn't trying to go to a team that wasn't trying to be competitive, so that immediately ramps up the timeline for this Houston Rockets team. Here. You know, obviously this was one of the first to open up. Um, some other things opened up recently and uh, just took a big look at the landscape of what we have here in Houston. Uh, obviously a destination that's very attractive to players, um, but also just the young talent. It always starts with the, with the players. Besides these guys getting to know everybody, it, that, that was pretty natural off top, but it comes down to the players. And I think we have a tremendous amount of young talent. Um, you know, sky's the limit as far as that. Uh, they talked about cap space and some of the flexibility we have. And I think uh, they've done a great job uh, building for the future. And so I'm excited to be part of that and look forward to the moves we can make coming up in the draft and free. You know, they reached out and contacted. Uh, they had done some homework behind the scenes, like they mentioned. And uh, for me, you know, I, I got an up close look. Uh, my first win with, with Boston was against Houston here, um, but it was a hard fought game. Uh, I remember Jalen hit about eight threes on us for a guy in the scouting report that wasn't supposed to be able to shoot. And so um, <laughs> I got an up close look at them, watched them quite a bit this year. And then obviously, when the process started, I dug into the film and, and really got to know the personnel much better. So. As soon as the season ended, um, I was glad they reached out, uh, young, talented team. And honestly, this is more attractive than a lot of the mid-level teams that kind of have that ceiling, that you know, five seed ceiling. Some teams that do reach out, I'd rather start with a young core group and try to build something. Clearly, this team would turn a lot of their attention to the defensive side of the ball. 
something that young teams are notorious for struggling with in the NBA. And this Rockets team certainly is no different. The team will wind up finishing 29th out of 30 teams in defensive rating with a 119th defensive rating. Unfortunately, their projected franchise star in Jalen Green was the last in terms of defensive box plus minus out of everyone who played meaningful rotation minutes. Other upcoming stars like Kevin Porter Jr. and Jabari Smith Jr. also had negative defensive box plus minus numbers. And next season will be all about connectivity. And if Yudoka can walk in and garner the respect of these young players, who all want the glory of NBA superstardom, that will work wonders in improving that side of the ball. There have also been a ton of reports centered around this team. And as I said, with Yudoka signing as the coach, the timeline was expedited tremendously for competition. Now we have been seeing reports of James Harden apparently wanting to come back to Houston so he can play his style of basketball. They also say he wants to win and he wants a $200 million contract. Now how all of that works out with the Rockets, I don't know, but it seems he will have to compromise on some of his requests. There have also been reports on Chris Paul apparently, can he be an option? And at this point in his career, I don't know what Chris Paul wants to play for. I don't know his ambitions and his motivations, but I also would like him far more as far as a veteran leadership for the young guys on the team. I also saw reports of Patrick Beverly, Brooke Lopez, and even Dylan Brooks being in play for this team. Those are certainly some interesting options and certainly could fulfill some of the needs of this team as far as fit and veteran leadership. That's really what this team needs is just bringing some seriousness to the roster. I feel like Ime Yudoka is a serious coach, at least while he's on the sidelines. And Patrick Beverly and Chris Paul will bring a certain energy that will ignite a team and build identity for them. Brooke Lopez is a pro's pro, and he will provide a stable presence for this team that lacks a defensive discipline. But honestly, like I said, this team seems to be a team preparing itself for a defensive renaissance of sorts, and I think that is always a good thing, as that's what I preach on this channel, of, of the NBA just getting back to being a defensive league instead of trying to outscore every opponent without a care for defense. That's where teams mess up when it comes to the playoffs. Now, whether or not we can accurately predict Houston's plan of action or even a said plan of action will actually work pretty much is out of the question. Sort of seems that Houston is kind of tiptoeing in that direction that the Portland Trailblazers are trying to take with Damian Lillard a little bit. Now, obviously, it's a little different with Dame because Portland is doing what they are doing, basically to hang on to that loyalty aspect with Dame and helping him win in Portland without having to jump ship. But at the same time, they are trying to cultivate a young core. With Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp taking on Cam Reddish and now landing the third pick in the 2023 NBA draft, they could potentially package some of that young talent to the make a Dame led team a contender in the West again. With the Rockets, I thought they were all in on the youth movement, and obviously they are going to need vets to help them become more professional and learn to win, having those winning characteristics. I don't know if Harden is that guy though. If you bring in Harden, you kind of have to go the Portland route and package some of the young guys and try to get a contender going. Or you can watch Harden take touches and opportunities away from the youth, which can hamper their long-term growth. I think they are going for a short-term success model, but at the same time, I think it could benefit them overall as they try to bring competitive nature to the squad, if done right. I don't know about the Dylan Brooks dynamic because I don't know if he's respected enough as a vet to win the locker room with that young Houston team, and that would bring more unnecessary drama to a team that needs maturity. He wouldn't be able to tell players that are already more talented than him. Look at him with the reputation he has garnered after this previous season as well. All in all, I believe this is shaping up to be a big offseason for the Houston Rockets. And while I think they are certainly an upcoming team long term, I don't think they have a brighter future than OKC per se. But I do believe they probably can put together some moves that will see them more competitive right now, but at the expense of their bright future.